Okay, we are live. Let's give YouTube a minute to catch up with us. It always takes a little while. We've got a couple people here. Come on, YouTube. Here we go. Okay, we have. I see an ad. Good. All right, cool. We're up. Hello, everybody. Um, we are here to talk about Hearts Unbroken tonight. Yay! We're on month three. We're this late. We're halfway through. Yeah. Uh, wow. Halfway through Living the books we're doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> awesome. Hello from Queensland, Australia. Wow, awesome. that's awesome. That's great. <sighs> okay, so um, this is our one YA book. And I think probably the least romancy, yeah, of them. I'm guessing. Um, I mean, it has a romance, but it's not like this was like twenty percent romance, eighty percent like microaggressions. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I mean, a lot of stuff. Yeah, there was a lot, a lot here, and I see like you annotated it which is good i <clears throat> did not but uh probably could have so thoughts what did you how did you how did you do with this one um i liked it i'm still gonna i'm gonna rate it a five star i mean probably like a 4.5 but mm -hmm. i'm just gonna round up because i think I, that's what i did also well see she does include like a character from one of her um like teenage books and I read that this month. And mm -hmm. so that's like part of the way why it was 4.5. Otherwise, I probably would have just rated it like four stars. But then it had that character in it. I was like, yes. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Oh, no. Yeah, that was rough. I did not know. I did not know all of that. Yeah. Just, and it, that was a lot. It really bites because um, I live in Aberdeen. And like we um he's kind of idolized in the park the one park that we have that's like a bigger park and it's called mm -hmm. Wiley park but like you go in and um it's like it has to do with stories it's called story of a glance so it has to do with stories and then um at the very kind of like towards the end where like the brush and the forest is that's where like the yellow brick road is and you have to go through it and there's a bunch of other things, and then there's like a statue of Elfrey Baum, mm -hmm. and then there's of course his that house that he stayed in called Eden or something something Ed Edmonton Castle or something like that. I can't remember what it's called. Mm -hmm. I've been in there. I didn't really like it. It's creepy. Yikes. Well, yeah, it's it's interesting because like I don't know that I've ever actually. Well, I guess I read one of the books when I was pretty young. Um, and I do remember, like, did you ever see the movie Return to Oz? It was, like, was one of the, the one? creepiest movies. <laughs> was that the one with um, Mila Kunis? Uh, oh, I don't know. It was, like, old. It And it was, like, creepy. And there was, like, a hall of, like, heads. I had nightmares about it. <laughs> <laughs> no i've never seen that but okay. now i want to look for it it's creepy it's like it, i don't even know when it came out i should i should like look it up actually let me see uh okay yeah 1985 yeah it's very Oof. it's very 80s um yeah it was like a dark Thank you. Somebody knew it's from the, it is, it's super creepy. I saw it when I was a kid and it was like, creeped me out, but that's terrifying. Yeah. They were like, it, but like they were still alive. So they were like decapitated heads that could like open, would like open their eyes. <laughs> like it was super creepy. I saw it. Like... <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. That sounds terrifying. <laughs> it was. I mean, and I saw this when I was like, I don't know, nine or something. <laughs> So scared of it. Was it like a Henson thing? No. No, it was like, no. 
Because I could see if it was a Henson, like a Henson production. It was supposed to be creepy. It was like a dark fantasy film. No. I've mostly seen like animated knockoffs of it. Okay. Creepy. Interesting. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. that was I tried movie. reading that. I think I only got like <clears throat> 20 pages into it and I was like, nope, it's not working. Yeah. So this is interesting. Felt like the conflicts with the boyfriends weren't believable. I don't know that I felt... The second one, like, I do feel like he kind of, like, the fact that he, like, wouldn't let her even talk about anything that seemed a little but i don't know i mean like they're also they're teenagers and like smaller stuff than that blows up when you're that young and it's like oh. okay so i got sidetracked okay so i oh, sorry the oz comments that went in a different direction but well, because um, it's so central it's central to the story too yeah yeah well, and it's interesting, too, because I think you kind of have people who have different takes on it, even in the story, right? Where, like, her mom is sort of, like, you know, on some level can, like, let it be what it is now. And it, it's like this kind of can you separate, like, the book from the author thing. But her brother can't, and that's also fine. I don't know. I think that was, like, an interesting. I also can't. But then again, I live here. So I kind of have to. Yeah there I have to be around it anyway and it's just like really um it's really weird to see that and then you know they're like oh yeah we went to storybook land this weekend and we went through the yellow brick road and like cool yeah I mean I get it like I think it's valid not to I think like I well especially when it's so personal um Cause like there's some stuff that I feel that way about. And then there's other things where like, if the author is no longer living, I can just sort of like separate it to some level, but it just depends. Right. Yeah. But it's just the fact that he wrote that letter and then yeah, not long after wounded knee happened. Yeah. Devastating. Yeah. No, it's horrifying. I mean, I, I mean, this is like no, in no way saying there's anything okay about what he did or who he was as a person. Mm -hmm. I think I'm, I'm just like purely talking about like, if you're thinking about how, like whether you could read, like watch the movies or read the, read the books or, you know, like how people would approach that. But yeah, no, that's absolutely. Yeah. I think like making him a hero is a problem. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, yeah. I knew exactly what you meant. No. Came out in the 19th. Yeah, it came out it, a long time ago. Um, but yeah, Jennifer, I think that's fair <laughs> for sure. For sure. Um, yeah, there was a lot in this. I thought it was it was interesting. Like, okay, so it was interesting for me because there were a few times where people said something. And then she, sometimes I picked up on it right away, like microaggression type stuff. And then there were a couple of times where someone said something and she reacted negatively. And I was like, wait, what? And then I like thought about it and was like, oh yeah, okay. Which I, like, I appreciate that she kind of does that. Yeah, I feel, I definitely related 1000% um, to Louise throughout this entire book because when I was in high school I was that angsty and I was that passionate about indigenous issues and the microaggressions that I faced but I think I remember at some point I just kind of like at some point you get numb to it because it it's just South Dakota is so rooted in um like the way that the c white people and other people have treated natives that I'm just like, I hear it. And I'm like, n you kind of have to pick your battles in a way it sometimes. Yeah. But then Louise, it was just like, no, I'm every battle is a battle. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's it was interesting too for me because I realized there's a lot of like phrases that are so like a part of people's everyday language that I don't even like you don't even think about like what it actually means, <laughs> you know? Um and I I think this was interesting for me because like I've worked on some phrases like changing how I speak about stuff, but this raised a couple that I hadn't like really thought about. And I was like, oh, well, yeah, that makes sense. Like where they said something about someone being like low on the totem pole, for instance. And I'm like, yeah, I grew up where people would just use that as a phrase and you don't necessarily think about that. Like, oh, no, Let's that could be offensive. offensive. Yeah. Like that's, that's a problem. Yeah. Yeah. I think that was literally every time somebody talked about race or something was mentioned with race that's what that is yeah so, yeah yeah and then i i, I bookmarked <laughs> the whole thing with the aberdeen thing yeah yeah but um definitely and then there was the whole like the symbolism and the um like stinging the braves where he had like the stinger through his heart. Yeah. Oh, that was a yeah. lot because I that knew was a lot. And like, it also brought up, like there were so many different racial issues that were brought up in the ways that like, um, like the way people talk about natives, the way that natives are talked about with like sports and things like that. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. And I just was like underlining and highlighting. I just, there was a yeah, lot. there was there there was I mean, like that was a lot of what was in this book because it was like, I, I feel like a window into the kinds of things that people probably deal with all the time, you know, um, a lot of like assumptions and um, yeah, I I it it was definitely interesting to me too that they had the love interest be this like Lebanese American kid. So you get like a window into like the similarities between like how different BIPOC people might experience. Yeah, I, stuff. I it was somewhere around the I remember highlighting it because he mentioned that he was Lebanese and I think I think it was like page 30 or something and I was like I feel like she should have like once she realized that she was interested in him I, I feel like she should have done just like a little bit of research into mm -hmm. some certain microaggressions because then when she brings it up just yeah lackadaisically in that one part in the middle of the book I'm just like whoa yeah what are you it doing was a lot. I was like you don't know how to like ease your way into this conversation she seems like kind of this like all or nothing person though so maybe she felt like she didn't know how to like halfway talk about it. But yeah. She just dove right in the deep end. Just dove yeah. right in. And he yeah. was wildly uncomfortable, which is why he was like, no, we're not Oof. doing this. That was, that was a lot. Yeah. So there was not, yeah. I wish there was more communication. Agreed. Yeah. I mean, I can see this. He was, he's, he, well, I mean, like he was very, intense about what he cared about right like he was really into the like journalism stuff which i i guess that's the thing is like i either was or was friends with a lot of people in high school who were that way where it was like very single-minded about the thing you're passionate about um so i i mean i can see that but also like i don't know did you read the author's notes um i can't remember if i read them or not i was just like because it was interesting. She says that um, their relationship is loosely based on uh, a guy that she is now still friends with, but dated when she was young, um, which I thought was interesting. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I just saw that. Yeah. That was interesting. Yeah. Oh, the yeah, thing is... Deck him. He was horrible, but like people do stuff like that all the time. I mean, it's not, it's not uncommon, which I like that they talked a little bit about some of that too. She tried, I think she tried to include a lot of stuff and like some criticisms I've seen is that it didn't like go deep enough and everything, which I'm less bothered by, but I can see it. Um, but she talked about like different forms of bullying and 
good. Cam also gaslit her a lot. Yes. Yeah. And then the, the pastor's kid, he was something else. Nice. Oh my. Yeah. Ugh. That was so gross. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I can explain a little bit of this. Um, earlier this month, I read Rain is Not My Indian Name, which is also by Cynthia Smith. Um, so the plot of that is that Rain has this best friend named, um, I think his name is Gavin or Galen. Um, but basically, um, they were hanging out and he was like her best friend and they had a kiss and in that town like people spy it's a small town so like people spy and they know like everything about you and that night they went to the playground and they were swinging on the swings and she was wearing this like really sophisticated shirt that she liked and um they kissed like once but the fact that people had seen her with him that it started like a whole rumor mill and um people thought they were like messing around and so um there were a lot of rumors that were spread about her and stuff like that in the book that she kind of had to deal with kind of didn't deal with because of the fact that she was grieving and so that also kind of like the reason why rain like brought that up in the book is because of what happened to her interesting Okay, so this is like referencing something that happened to a character in a separate book. Yeah. That's okay. That's interesting. That's like useful context to know. Um, yeah, I didn't realize that until I'd actually read it. Yeah, that's really interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I can see this like though that he kind of, but I, I, I will say because like, I mean, I don't know when this came out exactly um 2015 okay to when oh uh, no 2018 oh okay okay but i do think that like probably when she was writing this like i don't know that things were as far along yet with some of the like me too stuff maybe that was going on because i think um like people didn't take it seriously for a long time. Like, I mean, when I was in high school, people didn't take it seriously. Like people, it, so, uh, yeah. So I wonder if that's like part of, part of it. I mean, not that it's like okay to be dismissive of it, but I wonder if that's part of the, oh, the cousins. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, her, I, her family was great. Which is oh, yeah. nice to see in a YA I really book. Like, I really enjoyed seeing Rain in the book because I'd read it. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, I saw her and she was a whole teenager and like living her life. And then it also mentions a youth camp that was in um, the book with Rain. And then... Um, like her friend Queenie, because in the book they're like estranged and they weren't talking to each other and the fact that they were friends. And I was just like, yes. Like these characters are thriving, they're happy. Oh. Great. I love it. I, li I like it when authors do that too, where you get like little cameos of like characters from different books. I just think that's, I think that's awesome. Yes, her family was was so great. Like she had supportive parents who talked through. Like they, they were just it was it was really good. Yeah, she I don't always so get. <laughs> yeah, um, but I I feel like in a lot of YA books, like parents are kind of like absent or not involved or whatever. And so I like yeah, I like seeing how her parents were like involved, but still trying to also let them make their own choices about things. Yeah. Um, I can't think of, like what else I wanted to talk. There was like so much that happened. <laughs> and there was so literally. Um, I. 
Yeah, I like I I enjoyed it though. Like I I and I thought the like all the journalism stuff was kind of cool because they do get into like how how are you a like what like the the value of journalism and how to do it and interview people and um and I like too that they were able to like shed light on stuff. It was wild to me though all these parents that were like doing wild blackmail stuff with the casting of the play like oh my goodness i think that just also wow. has to deal with like yeah. a certain part of like the bible belt and yeah how religion plays into schools yeah and how the south plays into schools and church mm -hmm. i was like oh mm. but i yeah um i feel like i feel like that would have definitely been an issue at any school that is like more on the conservative side that would have like been up in arms about casting a native person as the tin man and a black girl as Dorothy. Oh yeah. That <laughs> outrage. Absolute outrage. <laughs> it would have been oh man. World War Three. Yeah. I appreciated that it was it did this whole thing of like people assuming that they didn't deserve, deserve it. Um, which is an issue that comes up so much. It comes up with like college admissions that comes and it's like, no, like, like that's which is not how this works. Brought up. Um, Shelby, her friend says to her like, Oh, it's so cool that you get your college for free. It's like, uh, no, no. <laughs> She's like, I'm going to have to apply for grants and scholarships and all of these other things because yeah, that like when I went when I was applying to college I was like maybe I can get some money from the college so or from the tribe and so I had to like message and call I don't know how many times um thankfully my mom knew somebody who knew another person who knew somebody in there that was like oh you're gonna have to fill this out and this out and you need this 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 and then when I finally did all that it was like no we can't give you anything Thanks. I was like, that's fine. It's fine. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yes. They so can't possibly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh. I was just talking. It's funny because this is something that I was just talking to Alexa Dunn about. We did a live stream, like talking about her book, The Ivies. And this issue comes up in, in there with like people assuming that students of color are like getting into high performing schools just because they're not white or whatever and like how much of an issue that is which i thought was interesting so yeah yeah i like that it included articles i like that like when it does kind of a mixed media thing in books that's good and yeah this is good a line about how being an ethical reporter doesn't mean leaving your conscience at the door yeah i yeah i thought that was really that was really good too. It's like, well, for sure. Oh no. I think it was like a line where it was like, there's going to be more white people than, or there's going to be more um, minorities than white people. That's going to be scary. <sighs> why? <laughs> like, but it's the thing. It's like, why is that scary? You know, like, and people don't want to, I think the person like didn't really answer it, but it's, it is interesting. Like when you really dive into like, also, why is that scary for you? Yeah. I also think that um, the part about the fact that Joey is Lebanese should have really been addressed just like a scotch bit more because of yeah. page 70 where they start having a conversation about it. And then um, this guy is like, kill everyone. Last one of those blank terrorists problem solved. And I was like, Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. It was a lot. I agree. Like, I think they needed to talk more. They, there just needed to be more actual communication between them. Like there were so many other things going on and I don't feel like we saw them talk enough. Um, yeah. But I really feel that she did make that clear, like, like not clear, but I feel like she really did make that true to life because after nine 11, there was a lot of discourse about. Oh yeah. The Middle East and like people said some really bad things. 
Yep. No, I, well, I remember like, cause I was in high school when that happened and it was, it was, it was bad for a long time. Um, oh, interesting. Yeah. Well, they should. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I can see this. I do think there was a lot, like she was trying to accomplish a lot, which like I'm I'm less bothered by than I think a lot of people are. Like I because I I've read I've read quite a few books, like YA contemporary books like that, where they're trying to do a lot and other people will not enjoy that. And I'm like, eh, it doesn't bother me, but I do think this could have been longer and like a bit more flesh out. But I think the reason yeah. why it feels like this too much is because um I, I don't think that it was meant for people to be comfortable. Yeah. I think it was meant to make people uncomfortable because it's like, if it's making you uncomfortable, there's a level of truth to a lot of what is being said. And it's mm -hmm. like, it, it prompts you to dig deeper and do a little bit more research into like, oh, why is that? Or why does why does X character feel that way? Why is X character getting mad about what somebody said? Like, why is this offensive? Yeah, no, I mean, I think, I do think there is, <clears throat> there is a lot of that. Um, I think this is fair though, but like it's stuff, I think it's stuff like this where it's like that or like the lack of conversation between her and the love of her and Joey where it's like, there could have been a little more, not a ton more. Like I, cause I agree with you. And I think that I appreciate that. But like, I think, I think, yeah, I mean, think. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think this is, this is pretty much it. Like, I think, I mean, cause it wasn't a very long book, right? It was no, like, it's well, like just two, like just 286. Like if this had been like 330 pages, you know I mean? If like she'd added like 30 or 40 pages to like kind of flesh out some of that stuff, I think it would have been. That would have been great, but yeah. But I do like the short chapters. Like I feel like I got through it real quick. Yeah. Um, um a lot I did like though when her and Joey were together, I I she was really guarded because she was just worried that it was, you know, she was gonna basically have another cam situation, but like mm -hmm. they didn't really talk when they really should have talked. Yeah. Which I mean, I guess is is also probably realistic for teenagers like cuz oh, I think you're you're cuz you're so scared of losing somebody that like you're not as good at like having conversations. Super realistic. <laughs> Super realistic because when I was in high school, I dated this one guy and um a lot of um our a lot of intimacy just was based on like, does he have racist parents? Does he have racist grandparents? And then I found out that I knew his grandparents, his grandparents knew my parents. We mm -hmm. knew of each other and whatever. And because it's a, it was a small town, but like, I was like, okay, so he's okay. And then after that, it was like, you know, like the whole thing where she was like, I just didn't want to find out that you were prejudiced against natives. And it's like, that's very true because you can't really make a relationship work if the family or whatever like doesn't like you as a yeah. as a race yeah i mean especially in high school like i think when you're older you know if they're willing to kind of separate from their family you can figure it out it's still not easy but like especially if you're in high school like you're living with your parents you can't like that's not not going to work yeah. I, I liked it. I like, I didn't think it was perfect, but I, I liked it. I think I gave it four and a half stars and rounded it up on Goodreads. Um, yeah. I'm going to rate it a five star. I really <laughs> did like it. Yeah. I did too. It was good. Um, I, yeah. Um, I think if I was like, are there other things you wanted to talk about with it? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of stuff happened, like I said. Yeah. I liked the fact that they added that mixed media, yeah, because mm -hmm. then you learn a little bit more about what's going on. Yeah. Um, I uh, when they go to like this, like like I said, when they were talking about like um, 
representation in sports. Like the whole when they were out, like they were out with Finn and Rain, and then mm-hmm. there were like the the um, mascot, and then you saw like people in red face and headdresses and stuff. Like that's a really big issue. Is just like yeah, just when you think, just when we think <laughs> that it's it's things are finally solved and like we're gonna, you know, like the Washington team is getting a new name, but it's like. You know, there's still other teams out there that are offensive, and right, it just um, it dampens the mood for sure. Yeah, I just think about like how many things like this I was so unaware of growing up, um, because that's the thing is like I think <clears throat> until you have it pointed out to you, especially when you're a kid, because you just kind of like go with whatever is around you. Um, But some of that like cultural appropriation stuff, for instance, like I didn't know it was a problem until I was, I don't know, in college probably. (laughs) Like I just, and it's, so it's interesting reading this and remembering back to what it was like to be, um, to be younger. And like, it's hard because like in, with teenagers, I, I think reading it, I can tell that like some of it is intentional where like it's being nasty and like the characters know what they're doing. And sometimes it's not, it's like, sometimes they're just like ignorantly saying things and not necessarily always realizing it's hurtful. Um, I don't know. Yes. Yeah. Yes, mm-hmm. exactly this. Insidious and then there was a uh, page 106 where she calls her friend a hot tamale and she's like, well, you're not laughing. And she's like, no, I'm not. Yeah. So you definitely see like micro aggressions and like a lot of misogyny as well. Mm -hmm. Ton. And things that people would just like laugh off. Um, Especially the teachers, like the teacher behavior. mm -hmm. The one, the part where she was like, well, it was called the wild West. And it was like, Oh, don't, don't say it. Don't, quote that don't don't quote me i know it's like oh yeah yep Oof. um yep that's uh that. i do um yeah i just i liked it i think i'm i think i'm more obviously was like more into what it was saying about stuff than like the ro- like the romance was fine. I think I just didn't have a strong feelings about it as like I, don't, I was just happy was they sincere, finally communicated. It's essential it's the quintessential like high school romance where you're yes. you're like what are we? Like where are we? Mm-hmm. You know, the minimal PG intimacy which you know, I'm glad they did not. I did, did not go into yeah. detail. Which, yeah, you know, because sometimes it's like you did not need to write that. You did not need to write all that. I did not need to know about that. <laughs> like when they're teenagers, yeah, yeah, and yeah, then, and and like you know, you don't know if you're official or not, and all that, and you're trying to spend time with each other or like go on mm-hmm. dates. And stuff. I don't think they actually went on a date. I think they went somewhere like once. And then it was all about photography and whatnot. Which honestly is very accurate to my high school experience. <laughs> like we didn't really go on dates usually with people we were dating. It would be like hang out. <laughs> it's not like uh, other than like prom or something. So I don't know. To me, that like, I mean, maybe there are people who do, but like, we didn't have money to go on dates. <laughs> so, it was like, hey, like, w- we're going to this place after school. Yeah. With right. Oh, they did do the bowling alley, which was like sort of for work, but sort of not. Fair. That's fair. You didn't need to write all that. Yeah. Yep. That's true. They did do the bowling alley thing. Um. Which again, like, feels very accurate to me for for like being in high school of like, oh, like we need to do this thing for a reason, but secretly it's because we sort of want to spend time together. <laughs> like, yeah, 
Paris. That's what it sounds like. Sounds like the, some of the side characters are in her other books. Yeah, Rain, Rain, Dimitri, and Rain, Dimitri, Marie, and um, Queenie. They're all from Rain is not my Indian name, and Finn and Natalie and Ayana. <laughs> They're from the other book. It's cute. It's only like a oh. hundred and something pages. It's pretty good. Oh wow. I would read more from her. I like it. I actually also also just saw her um, do. She did a panel um, for because I like the 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 last day was today, but there was the Publishers Weekly U.S. Book Show was happening virtually, and um, she moderated a panel of Indigenous authors, like children's and then she authors. Has a, like a cool. kids book too. Like this oh, one's cute. Just, I think like ten pages, something like that. 40 pages. I don't remember, but it was really cute. That's cool. Yeah. And I think she has something coming out this year also. Oh, yeah. A Peter Pan retelling coming out. Oh, yeah. I have that. Cool. Sisters of the Never See. Oh, cute. There you go. It's yeah. middle, is it middle grade? Yeah, I think so. I still have to read it. Is a, like, I'm, I'm doing a secret like thing. Oh. Yeah. It's 296 pages. Oh, that's not bad. And there's an epilogue, so. Cool. That's fun. Yeah. Somebody's excited for that one. Awesome. Oh. Uh, I thought some of the church stuff was interesting that we kind of see both sides of like awful religious people and then her family like trying to find a church that feels safe for them. Like, which I pre, I don't know. I kind of like that. I don't, I, especially in YA when you kind of see both sides of things, cause I don't always love it when on either direction, like religion is one-sided, like it's all good or it's all bad. Like I, I don't know. I think like seeing how it can be both depending is useful. Definitely. Cause like, um, we, I mean, I have one church I go to, like, I'm not, I'm not religious in any, in any way, but like my family is. So when we go there, mm -hmm. like, that's the, like, when we go back to the reservation, that's the one church that I will go to. But like here in Aberdeen, I have not found a single one that I'm like, this is where I want to be mm -hmm. at all. So like, yeah. I totally, totally relate because yeah. um, I also feel like certain races are get obviously treated differently because of their, you know, how their um, people came to be in either like Catholicism or Christianity and like mm -hmm. the way that it happened also determines like yeah. where they end up. Yeah makes sense yeah i think it's hard because like i'm you know like we are christians but like very liberal progressive christians and so like finding a church that feels comfortable is still kind of working progress. like it's um and we live in new york so like i think we'll find one because there are more options but like it's 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 hard and i can only imagine like living somewhere else would be even more so um yeah Oh, cool. Indian Shoes also came out. I think yeah, that was like really a younger cool children's. Oh, cool. It's like a little awesome. chapter. It's like a little chapter book. It's only like, I think like 80 pages, something like oh, that. Cool. I liked it. That's and awesome. the, oh, this one also talks about, this part talks about Halloween and Halloween costumes. Mm hmm. Yes. There's so many things with Halloween costumes that, again, it's, like, stuff you don't think about when you're a kid because, like, your parents normalize what is and isn't okay. And then, yeah. Yep. Um. <laughs> That's funny. I'm trying to think because, like, our family, my friend group was really like not tight knit, but like <clears throat> obviously it was a small town. So we all kind of like 
oh yeah, I think Jesse and so and so are dating, and I'm like, no, they're not. And then I'm the idiot because like they were dating. I'm like, I did not know. He never told me. I don't know. <laughs> um. Oh, oh, okay. So then, hey. hi. And then we have the uh, when when uh, Huey does the whole thing where he like makes his little speech and then the teacher tells him that after rehearsal Mrs. Q said I was off tone off focus Huey mm. mumbled she said Bomb was a man of his time nobody cares yeah. anymore and I shouldn't have mentioned it I wanted to mm -hmm. deck the teacher and the teacher yeah. <clears throat> The teacher is fictional, but I was like, yeah, that feels like something I've heard before in real life. Yeah. And I mean, I think the book like kind of like acknowledges that, okay, the te I mean, the teacher learns from it and we kind of like acknowledges, hey, I was feeling sensitive about this because I was already getting all this feedback but I shouldn't have like just shut it down like that I should have like so I appreciated that there was like this whole kind of arc for her of realizing what she did wrong and like which I think is important because I, I do think that it's like true to life that a lot of times like especially when you're feeling threatened um you can have kind of a knee-jerk reaction that is not what it should be <laughs> and like being able to like recognize that and apologize and do better is important Yes, exactly. I think if she, I I I think if she was gonna write more and like include certain characters, then I really feel like she should be like, and this is what happened, and like actually like a good gradual progression in these people's lives. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I literally tabbed every time race was brought up or like anything racial. It was free. It was frequent. There was a lot of it. I mean, she, which I think, and, and a lot of it is like subtle where I would have to like go back and be like, Oh, 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 oh right. Yes. That is the problem. Um, I think it's, I think it's good to like not necessarily spell everything out right away. But, yeah. Oh yeah. And I also felt like now that I'm kind of like looking over it yeah. again, um, I felt this way too, actually. Yes, that, I like. Yeah, I like yeah. that. I did too. I also feel like um, Garrett, the guy that was the wizard, mm -hmm. and he's like, like it's not cool to be white anymore. All of these people barging into our country, taking over, we're practically an endangered species. Like, oh, yep. I mean, people say stuff like this. They really do. There is, I don't want to like be spoilery or anything, but there is like a line that has some similarities again in Alexa's book, The Ivy. <laughs> so it's interesting the parallels because we were talking Monday night about her about her book, and there's like, yeah, I mean, I think I think it's important to talk about like people who feel threatened. But this is the thing: is it's like it's you know like if you have traditionally been in a position of influence and power and having a voice it is not oppression for other people to suddenly also have those things <laughs> you know or other groups to also have it like that's not oppression <laughs> like uh and I, I feel like that seems to be the feeling of like threat um that some people experience yeah definitely and I like what, okay, so I like what Finn said oh. on page 201 when he said, mm -hmm. when I was your age, it was harder. It was like I was Indian in Indian country and white in white America, not anymore. Being quiet mm -hmm. can send just as big of a message as speaking your mind. Yeah. Oh my God, I hated Cam. I hated Cam, Cam so was the worst. He was so awful. He was a, a bad potato. Yeah. A lot of it was really realistic. It, um, I like that there are more books coming out that are doing stuff like this. Like, um, did you read? Did you read Alyssa Cole's um, like horror thriller that came out last fall? When no one is watching, it's um, it's about like it's kind of horror, 
about a neighborhood being gentrified in Brooklyn. And it's interesting because similarly, it has a lot of like microaggressions in it. And the discourse around that book was so interesting to me because there were people who would be, who would say, this isn't scary. And I'm like, then you are not reading it right because this is very scary. Like put yourself in the shoes of this black woman character who's experiencing these microaggressions and these like subtle threats. Like just because this doesn't seem scary to you, it doesn't mean it's not scary, which is, oh, is I that, don't know, I thought that was interesting. That's the one where it's like an apartment building and it's blue. Yes. With yellow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think yeah. that one's in my library. I'll have to check it out. But yeah. It's interesting. Um, it's amazing, like just with indigenous horror or like horror in general, that's centered around a BIPOC story. It's like, mm -hmm. it is amazing how many people will be like, I didn't get it, or I didn't understand the context, or um, this, um, I couldn't relate. And like all of those things that people say, where it's like, you are proving the point yeah. of the author who yeah. wrote this. Yeah. It's like yeah. you have to really look in yourself and like do research and be like, why is this? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything else you wanted to talk about in here? I'm trying to think. Like, I feel like we've covered a lot of it. Um, oh, I thought it was kind of cool the use of um, language. And then she has a glossary in the back, Muskoka English glossary, and talks yeah. about like them using an app to learn language, which I thought was interesting. Um, yes, thank you. Exactly this. Like when people didn't find Mexican Gothic creepy, same same thing. It's the same thing. <laughs> like, I'm like, it's about oppression and colonization and misogyny. It's super creepy. <laughs> so, like, same with like the only good Indians. Yeah, also very creepy, yeah. Um, hey, yes, so it is by an indigenous author. It's a YA contemporary book with a romance plot um, with indigenous an indigenous main character. Um, so yeah, it's a good one. And this and will be up for vandalism. replay. Oh yeah, that was so scary. Like th that was scary, honestly like that they almost could have burned their house down. Like, and the, the thing is that like, the, which I mean, that's the thing is like, there are dumb teens who like think it's okay or fine to do stuff. I don't know. But yeah, I mean like stuff like that has happened to people over the years. Like that's not, yeah, it's not unrealistic. So. Cause people will say horrible things and they'll do horrible things. And they'll be violent. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm glad we. I'm glad we read this because, like, I don't pick up YA contemporaries that often, and so, like, I think this was like a good. It's one I'm. I'm happy that I read, and I don't know that I would have gotten around to it if we weren't doing it for this. Oh yeah, definitely. Cool. I also um, going back to the. Um, with Cam though, with his mom, because we th she had, um, Louisa talked about Cam's mom and how um, Cam's brother was marrying a Kickapoo oh. woman, and mm -hmm. um, how like how she looked down on this this woman, and then at the very end, she's like, "Oh yeah, she's mm -hmm. my, that's my grandbaby," and like all like. But crazy. that's what happens too. Having grandbabies, man, it changes people. <laughs> and not everyone, but a lot of people. <laughs> well, that's how Calvin's grandparents were mm -hmm. because like they were very uh racist when we first got together and like they were making microaggressions and um like they were making fun of me at Thanksgiving without like in a way that I didn't get it until I was like at home and I was like that oh they were making fun of me that wasn't them being trying to be nice that was 
okay. And so when I told him that, he's like, like, no, my grandparents aren't like that. Like, they're not racist. And I'm like, are you sure? Like, I don't know if this relationship can continue if you're going to be on their side. And then it, like, we got married and then something happened and it finally dinged and he was like, oh, they're terrible. And I was like, yeah. So then a few, a few years went by and then they apologized for the things that they said and done and everything like that. And then once we had Soren, it was like everything changed. They were completely different people. Mm-hmm. But yeah, they do change. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's interesting too, because like, I know my, my parents, my parents are never like, racist in the sense like they didn't have an issue with me marrying my husband or whatever but I do think having mixed grandbabies because they're pretty conservative like politically and stuff and I do think having like mixed grandbabies has made them more like oh maybe like we should rethink how we view things like Trayvon Martin, for example, like if you think that could be your grandson, like that puts a whole different spin on. So I do think it's interesting how it challenges the mindset of like, oh, yep, yep. It's like when it's when it becomes personal, suddenly you're like, oh wait, maybe there's something else. Um, This is a good question. I actually brought the next one for anyone who wants to join. So next month, we are reading Sanctified by Maggie Blackbird. This is an adult indie romance. And I, I, I think it'll be fun. It's, um, it's kind of a, an enemies to lovers, but like family enemies, where they're like on opposite sides of, because um, like the, the hero is running the campaign for his brother, I think, who's like, he's campaigning to become the like chief and the po- she's part of the opposing family that um and he's ca- so he's catholic but she's part of the opposing family that is like against having um any western culture and religion involved in things so it's like it sounds like it's going to tackle a lot of big issues and be kind of an interesting interesting one so either way i'm interested to read it yeah So that's what we're reading next month. And um, we'll probably, I'm guessing, do you want to like do the live stream again, like the last Thursday of the month? Does that work for you? The 24th? Yep. Okay. So it'll be the last Thursday night of the month (laughs) for the live show (laughs) for anyone who's wondering. Um, Oh, this is interesting. Yeah, grandbabies, grandbabies will uh, will do it. You get a different perspective for sure. Yay, awesome. Yeah, join us. So it'll be fun. Um, this is the June book, and then we're going through August. So we're halfway through. We've got this and then two more books. If you're wondering, um, all the books should be linked in the video description. And then also on my Instagram page, there's a graphic that shows. We both have one on there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And Michelle also. You can follow her, too. So we both on our Instagrams have graphics that show all of the books through August. So And August will be fun because it's a, a, a paranormal romance, which will be like a fun a fun change. <laughs> so. Paranormals, those good times. Yeah. Cool. Well, um. Thank you, everybody. Do you, I don't know if you have any final things you want to talk about or if anybody have questions, but I think this was a pretty good. No, this oh, is yeah. Good. Yeah. Michelle is also linked down below. She is at Thor Wants Another Letter. So go follow her. Awesome. It's a good time. Yes. Thanks for joining us, guys, and have a great night. Enjoy the rest of your week.